Hi, today I want to talk to you again about dividing a design drawing up into separate blocks to make a print. But I decided that this time I would show you from a finished print back to how to separate it because I know it's a really difficult concept to grasp and um, I thought I would give as many sort of ways of looking at it as possible. So I've actually cut one of my Scottish uh, designs into finished blocks and I'm just going to put the final layer onto one of my prints and then we'll work backwards as to how I divided it up into the different areas. So um, I'm just going to do that final layer and I'm going to do that as a rainbow roll. Now we're going to look at all the technicalities of um, inking up and rollers and pressure and things like that in this series but for now all I want is to get a finished print so that I can show you. So today I'm not working with oil-based inks, I'm working with water-based inks and when I say water-based I mean they, they clean with water uh, not safe wash inks, these are actually water-based inks. So the ones I've got in front of me here are made by a company called Graphic Chemical and um, they do make nice water-based inks. Sometimes the supply isn't great, they can be quite hard to get hold of, so um, you can't always get all the colours. But I have them in my workshop, so I'm going to use those today. The other inks that I'm using in this process are the ones I used to teach with, which are Lucas inks. Again, water-based inks, which I mix up in two different colours to teach classes. So those are the inks that I'm using today. And we will look at inks properly in another episode. But I've got a live stream coming up and I want to print with some water-based inks so that we can talk about them on the live stream. So now I'm just going to ink my block up. And I just want to make sure that there's no rogue ink around the place. So I'm just going to take the time to check and wipe any areas that I think might have ink on them where I don't want it to be. You can see from how grubby this block is that I've been using it all morning. Okay, there we go. So I've got my registration device here for tabletop printing and it has the adaption on it to take a smaller size piece of paper and the paper I'm working with at the moment it's Hosho, it's a Japanese paper and again I'm just testing that out um, because I've been questioned about it on the live stream so I'm working on that at the moment. So I'm just going to pop my block down. So you can see I'm just checking on my print's progress as I'm taking the impression. And I should say, well, I think of it that these registration devices that we sell, um, we now sell them with and without a bench hook so that you can use them in a printing press if you want to. Um, obviously, the bench hook is for hand printing because it holds the device in place. Okay, how are we doing? Good. Okay, so I think I'm now in business to talk to you about how I split this print up into its different blocks. 
So now I've taken what is actually a very rough and ready proof, I can start to explain to you how I divided this drawing up into three different blocks. So here I've got my pencil drawing and I wanted quite a graphic sort of interpretation of it. And what I like about this gully is kind of the movement in it. So I knew that I wanted quite a sort of dynamic kind of print. So if I just show you the different blocks um, I've got here, I've got three blocks. I've left the ink on them so that you can see. Just get that one into place. And here they are. And there they go from light to dark. Very straightforward um, compared to my usual way of printing, but they're quite they they give quite nice results. You can also see from the inking up that I've I've used a, a roll with different colours on um, just because it looks better that way in the end finished print. But you can see also that the palest block has the most lino left on it and then the next block has less lino and then the final block has the least lino of all. So what I started out with to arrive at that were three blocks of lino that I had marked up with my master tracing and mapping out uh, with the master tracing is, is something that I, I'll show you on the um, in this series. So I've got what looks like quite a sterile um, tracing here, but I had three of these, one for each block, and then I simply went in and I marked out my areas. I'm going to use China graph, or rather three different coloured China graphs, to try and explain to you how I decided which areas to cut when it came to planning out this three block lino cut. So here is the palest block which has the most lino on it and what I started out with were three blocks that looked identical to this one so the whole size of the print with the master tracing in carbon on it and my thinking for the palest one was that I was going to get as much leave as much lino behind as possible because if I have a pale block that goes over as much as possible, the darker blocks that come on top will hide the pale lino and putting a block on top of the under block means that I don't have to worry about lining things up exactly. So it cuts down registration problems if that pale block just goes under everything on the print. So the bit that I kept very much up here was important because I needed my sky but I also have that pale block running down over here. Now because I started out with my lino being the whole area of the print I could be very lively about how I cut out this block and you can see those edges are very different from the traced edges, the hard traced edges. I've, I've been very choppy. I've stuck roughly to this shape. You can see particularly up here, you can see here, because of course we're looking at the lino is backwards. You can see I've stuck to that sort of arching shape, but I've been very loose about how I followed the edge of that. And that's absolutely fine. It doesn't matter because this is white space anyway. So there's nothing lining up with that. So that's my white palest block that I'm, I'm showing in this white china graph. So I got that one cut and then I went on to the next block, which is my mid-tone, which I'm showing here with this rather pretty rainbow roll on it. And we will look at different inking techniques in these videos. So this next block, you can see the big difference is that there's no sky here. So I was had to be careful about getting this edge quite right. 
because I wanted the edge of my mountain nice and crisp. And also, I had to leave behind, um, let me use that to point, but it's probably clearer. I had to leave behind enough dark here to separate the pale sky from the pale face of the mountains. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my other cat, Betty, who's decided to come and shout at me. Um, so I've got my second block, again, is coming down here and here, a little bit less lino left behind, but it's still doing all of the stones up here as well, and the stones here coming down less of the area here and some of the stones in the foreground it's still catching those stones and down here so this one has a lot more cut into it and you can see the edges are getting even more choppy again so there's quite a lot of lino cut away so I'm cutting away all of this stuff but I'm safe in the knowledge that I don't have to line this up exactly with the underblock. It's going to sit on top of it. And I'm also, at this stage, taking out, cutting out little stones at random. You can see it better here, so that that under layer will show through. And here I've cut texture into those blocks as well. So that's that layer. Just give this a little wipe. And then we're going to come on to the final layer, which is the um, has the least lino left behind of all. And with this layer, now I do have a registration um, issue to think about because I need this line here to be right because it's got to line up with um, the sky block here and also with my secondary block here so we've got to marry all those edges so all of those edges need to be nice and crisp for everything to line up well so a little bit of registration to do in the sky but when it came to cutting I was just focusing on where the stones are this time in the centres and the edges and you can see now I'm losing quite large spaces and really just sticking to the centre of things and round the edges. So the job of this line block is really to put shadow in and depth and it's all these little cut out areas around here. So it's 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 adding movement and it's it's really bringing the whole print together. If I show you the difference between um, the first two blocks printed, you can see here. So this is the first two blocks. It's fine. It's there's nothing wrong with it, but it lacks any depth or um, a kind of narrative. It's it, it's lacking. So when that final block goes in, it really serves to bring the whole print together. And as I was always working from three whole pieces of lino, I was able to just cut with reference to edges, but not having to line up exactly with edges. And it also means working this way with them layering rather than each little bit matching up. It means that I can carry on taking prints and adjusting the cutting as I go. So I have an example here of my second block. So you can see with this one, this is a, an early example of my second block. And you can see the cutting here is quite bold and I changed my mind and I've actually gone back in and I've finessed it. I, I've, I've taken bits out here and I've done more cutting away here as well. So, and there's a few cuts in the mountains as well. So you see, you can, using this method, 
sort of edit as you go on printing. And we'll look at that with a different um, design as this series progresses. But I hope that that's been another way of looking at how a print is divided into blocks and that it's been helpful. And I hope you'll join me for another film.